I decided I can't wait. <laughs> I want to get this done, even if it breaks me. <laughs> Don't care, I want to get it finished. Mr. Wright, good on you, sir. Thank you. Can I afford it? Technically, yes. <laughs> but not if I want to eat. <laughs> oh, man. I wish money your own trees. I got to get this done. I got to finish this. I went ahead and did it. You can see I went to Menards and I got nine more boxes of this stuff. It is Mohawk Luxury Vinyl Plank. There you go. And the color is Hearthstone Oak 7256267. So if you like it, go to Menards and grab you a box. Give me a minute, I'll tell you how much it was. There we go. $35.69 a box. And it came out to $340. But there is a 11% mail-in rebate. So when I send this back in, I'm going to get $35.33 back on a gift card. So that's cool. But like I said, still $300. Uh, it's, just, it's just money. So why do you want vinyl plank over regular old laminate? Well, if I'm not mistaken, laminate flooring is barely water resistant. So if you get it wet, it can still expand at the seams and end up looking ugly and it can get ruined if it gets wet. Vinyl plank is, that's just what it is. It's, it's vinyl. It's, it's not going to, water won't hurt it. And as you all know, with these big things, me always being out in the mud and getting wet and animals being wet, my floor, especially in the wintertime, is constantly wet. The little area over here by my front door is laminate or a uh, vinyl planking and you can see it's it's just dirty but it's it's not swollen at all all the seams are still really good i don't even have the transition pieces like in a square to kind of keep it where it needs to be i just walk on it and this stuff right here is i hate to say it's indestructible but so far it's been fairly indestructible and i drop rocks on it <laughs> so yeah, a vinyl plank is the way to go, especially if you live in the country and you have a mobile home. Another cool thing about vinyl plank is it doesn't require glue. You don't have to put anything on top of your subfloor because all of these planks have kind of like a like a rubberized back, and it's kind of bendy. This one here's got a problem where they manufacture defect, but that's okay too. But anyway, like I said, it's kind of bendy flexible and if you like me if your floor is not perfect get a contour to the floor and an additional benefit to this type of flooring is if you mess up someplace you can always just pull it up and you want to lay it a particular way later to give it kind of a cool design on the floor the sky's the limit you do whatever you want if you got the skills you you can you can make all your flooring dreams come true with vinyl plank <laughs> There's only a couple things really you got to remember when it comes to vinyl plank. They always tell you to start in the left hand corner of a room, and I'm sure it's got something the way these edges lay, you know, when you're laying your plank down. I always lay mine to where the widest flat edge of your plank is facing towards me. That way, you can take your next piece, see how this is a smaller edge right there. You can just sit right here and you can fit it in just like that and then lay it down, okay? You don't want to have the small edge, excuse me, you don't want the small edge facing you. That way you have to try to work the bigger edge down like that. You know what I mean? It just make it a whole lot harder to install it. So remember, the fat flat side faces you the small side, you just stick it in a corner, just like that, and then you lay it. Bam, you're done. A few tools that you need to do laminate. Uh, I always have this handy, you know, my little square. I have tape measure handy, a rubber mallet, and a razor knife. And why my tools are all scattered out, I don't know. You don't need any fancy tools to cut this stuff because all you got to do is flip it over, mark your line where you want to cut it, 
score it three or four times with a razor blade, flip it over, score it a couple times with a razor blade, and just break it. But if you want to go spend the money on the laminate floor cutter, hey, by all means. I'll have links below in the description for all that stuff if anybody's interested. Now, the oscillating tool, this is if you have uh, your wall trim already up and you can't take it off. You want to try. You don't have to, but <clears throat> excuse me. You want to try to make sure you got enough space in between your your baseboard and your floor so your laminate can slide up underneath of it. Now, does it do this? It in my place on this wall. Mm, there's a couple parts where I couldn't slide it underneath, and I just said screw it, and I just butted up against it. Is that the right way to do it? Eh, no, not really. If you want to do professional, you want to make sure your flooring goes underneath your your uh baseboards <clears throat> but again it's not a big deal really it's it's not it just depends what you can live with i also like a project like this because if if you're on a limited budget like me you can't afford to buy 20 boxes of this stuff at a time you can go get you two boxes at a time lay you two boxes or you just start hoarding it you know just get it as you can get it now you got to be careful if you do it that way that might discontinue what you were buying so you might get stuck with a bunch of flooring that you don't have enough to finish your job right or you can kind of i had a friend of mine she would go and buy one she would make sure all the laminate was the same thickness but she would buy multiple colors of different flooring and just scatter it all over the place kind of like i did my bathroom wall with the stain colors i thought it was going to be really dorky at first but when i seen it it was actually pretty and it was a completely unique floor Nobody else has got her floor, but it, it does. It looks really nice. Another thing I want you guys to realize, especially, well, this is mainly going out to people who's never done this before. There is no house or no mobile home that is perfectly square, right? And when I mean square, if you don't know what that is, this is square. It's a 90 degree, okay? In, in make-believe fairy tale, Unicorn Land, every new home that's built should have perfectly square walls but they're not i promise you they're they might be close but they're not so if you go by how square the wall is there's more than likely there's going to be a chance where your flooring is not going to be straight and you're going to get to the end of your project and you're going to be short say three inches up here and then you're going to be exactly where you need to down here because you know nothing's square it's not so if you run into that situation, don't get all bummed out, poopy pants, and don't get up upset with yourself, okay? It's part of it. The cool thing about laminate, you mess up, you can pull it up and start again. It's it's easy. Just be careful. Take one up at a time, restack it. Yeah, it might suck. You might have to redo your whole floor. It's okay. It's okay. Um, and then if <laughs> you want to really be a jerk and you got a place that's got nice laminate floor and you want to move, you take your floor with you. <laughs> just pick it up. <laughs> just make sure you tell the other people. I'm keeping my floor, though. You you can have the plain wood, but I'm keeping my tile or my laminate, you know. Another thing you might want to invest in is some knee pads. Do I ever do that? No, because I'm a boy and I'm hard-headed, honestly. Now, I always take and make sure I rub the bottom of my new plank off, get the like, little dirt and stuff, make sure this is clean. Now, <clears throat> it might take you a box to kind of get the uh, the system down for putting this. Because the more you do it, the easier it's going to be. When you first mess with it, you're going to struggle getting this edge to match into this one. And when you pick up on this one, this one's going to come apart. You're going to get aggravated. Just don't get aggravated. Everybody has to do it. And each and all laminate lays a little bit different or it acts a little bit different when you go to lay it so all i do is make sure my short side fits down in the corner of the long side of these pieces just like that and i kind of push in not hard at all not hard and then uh, i'll take pick this piece up slide that one into it okay now, with this laminate, I didn't have to do this with my other laminate. This one here, this side here, am I going to say, how many times am I going to say that? See how they're just, you kind of got to push them in and they kind of snap. 
after a while, your thumb is going to hurt. Rubber mallet, that piece is installed. That's all it is. Now, if you look, this piece here, I'm short that piece. So I got to go through my scraps and see if I have a scrap piece that will actually fit in here nicely. And if I don't, I've got to take a brand new piece and cut it to fit. And that's okay. It's just part of it. You're going to have some waste. I am so close. This is like maybe a half inch too short. <laughs> yeah, another half inch, it would have went completely underneath this trim. And that would have been good. Now, if any of you are like me, you have a hard time reading a tape measure. I'm not the best at a tape measure. So, here's a tape measure that I recommend all people have okay this tape measure it's got all the numbers on it on the bottom the important ones you know the well they call it the uh, imperial measurements see it's got eighth quarter three eighths half inch five eighths three quarter seven eighths all the stuff that you need right now if you want metric and a lot of times i, I use metric myself because it's just one two three four five six seven eight nine ten on to infinity that's all you need. And if you got a quarter, it's 1.25. If you got a half, it's 1.5. And then you got 1.75. And then you can break it down even smaller. To me, metric is a whole lot easier than fractions. I hate fractions. But anyway. Now for the sake of this video, I'll show you guys the uh, oscillating tool I was telling you about. So I'll lay this down here. As you can see, the flooring almost goes underneath my trim. So instead of taking the whole trim board off, I'll use this with a scrap piece of flooring. Sorry, I didn't mean to bump the camera. As you can see, all I did was let this rest on top of the floor, keep it level, and scoot it into that, tr that baseboard, and it cut out what I needed. Now that should, in theory, slide right, right up underneath there. There we go. See? I gotta clean it out a little bit better, because I've got a piece of a trim board right here. There we go. It's underneath the trim, and it's gonna look a whole lot better. So you figure my baseboard is about three quarters, of, three quarters of an inch wide, so I have to account for that. And it looks like this space here is 13 and a half inches plus the three quarters of an inch. So let's cut this at 13. Let's cut it at 13 and three quarter. That should give me enough uh, flooring that way I can slide it up underneath that baseboard just a little bit. That's all you need, just a little bit. So let's go here. So I've got 13, three quarter. It's always, you always got to remember, it's always, it's always best to cut it a little bit longer than what you think you need because you can always go back and trim it. You just can't put it back. So I'll take my square, find my line. So you guys can see. Razor blade, and I'll kind of push down kind of firm. Make sure you don't cut into your good flooring, which I'm totally not doing. Come on, stupid. Pay attention. There we go. There it is. Score it over here. slow yeah and there you go that's the cut piece now make sure before you go cutting your piece your tiles laying right that way you don't cut off the wrong end to fit right here okay that was a hard lesson learned for me back when I started doing this kind of stuff that now this is kind of tricky right Kind of wiggle it to get it back into this piece. Like that. There we 
we go. I keep hitting the camera stand. I'm sorry. I don't mean to do that. Take your mallet. Bang. There we go. Done. Now, if you want to, you can start where you left off and work the opposite direction. Me, I like just to go on down to the other end, but it don't matter. It really doesn't. So, let's say I do it this way. Make sure I got my vinyl plank down properly so the right edges meet each other. There we go. See if I can't get it to slide underneath the floor. Look at that. It went in. Awesome. There we go. That's like that. There we go. That piece is done. Let's go to the next one. Where my flooring sitting right. The little groove goes into the big groove on this laminate. Maybe y'all can see it a little bit better this way. There you go. Done. Next one. Did I mention to get knee pads? Yeah, you might want to get some of those. See, and I'm stubborn, and I, I just I don't. I don't like how it feels on the back of my leg, behind my knee when I crouch down like I am now. It just drives me bonkers, man. But I definitely pay for it in the morning. Definitely. Come here, hammer. No, we're done. That's all it is, folks. Now, if you look, see how tight these seams are? That's what you're looking for. You don't want a little crack where it might look something like, uh... Oh, hold on here. Dang it. You don't want that, right? You want it to fit like that. As seamless as you can get it. Sometimes you're just not going to be able to get it perfect, and that's okay. But, you know, do the best you can. And usually when they butt together on the ends, the way it's cut from the factory, it's going to leave like a little gray line. That's fine, because you can kind of see it here. See that? It looks like it's far apart, but it's not. You know, it's just the way the material's cut. Now, it does get a little more complicated when you have to work around things. Say, like, I don't know, you got corner of a wall or anything like that yeah you got to kind of do a little measuring and figuring and cutting yada yada and it's always best before you do your floor pull everything out of it right it just makes it so much easier so you don't have to work around stuff now this i'm going to get this completely out of the way that's going to suck because that thing's heavy i didn't realize how heavy i built it but that sucker's heavy i hope this helped you all uh, if you've ever want to tackle a flooring job yourself remember don't buy laminate buy vinyl plank it's about the same money if not cheaper it just depends what you're buying you know so anyway hope y'all like this video like and subscribe and check the description below for all the tools that i used if you want to get some for yourself that's awesome because it goes to amazon and it gives me a couple pennies and i will catch you guys in the next one